this meeting. It's um, 6.15. <clears throat> and um, we'll confirm the open meeting law conformity that we posted the agenda in three places around town on the town website and emailed it to the interested parties. And um, <clears throat> Recording in progress. Okay. Um, and, um, and as you were just talking about, I'd like to... Um, publicly say goodbye to Tom Pierce and thanks for everything you did to this town. Yes. Yep. All right, so we'll start with the, um, um, a, um, also in for public comment, we're going to limit public comment to five minutes on the topic and we'll have that at the end of the um, agenda. So the prior meetings minutes of November 8th, I didn't see any corrections in there, so I'd move to approve those unless you guys have a correction. Nope, nope. I don't. Second nope. that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Cool. And we have <clears throat> guests here tonight, um, one in house and one on the on the Zoom. So no, let's uh, let the, the physically present person go first since he had to travel farther to come here. That's Angus Cusker and you're speaking here on um, the um, um, two letters of support you requested from the town. You want to um, speak about that? Yep. So um, basically um, we have two different letters. One letter is for um, a uh, enhancement of recreation stewardship and asset funds um, that the state um, is distributing a grant application for um, existing trails. So, um, Ridge Line Outdoor Collective, formerly Rasta, um, and from Mountain Mill Bike Association, which is our parent organization, um, we're applying for um, funds for existing trails in town, um, three being on federal forest service, uh, Contest Trail, Old Chant, Staff Boiler, and um, four on private land, in Rochester, Blaine's Hill, Mars Brook Connector, Earl's Trail, and Atlas Trail. Um, so yeah, it's just the the idea is that we've seen you know increased use because of the pandemic. You know, this past couple summers. So it's just an opportunity that uh, they're giving out money for trail maintenance. Um, so we're trying to take advantage of that and keep our trail in good shape. Um, so that would be just strictly a support letter of support um, for our application that we're planning to submit uh, at the end of this week. And that's um, and then there's another one for the um, yep. And yep. the the other letter is um, a um, Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Collaborative um, State uh, Grant Community Program Grant. Um, the town of Randolph is applying for this um, in partnership with Vermont Huts Association. Um, this would develop um, a new trail in the vicinity of uh, Braintree, Randolph, and a little bit East Rochester uh, as part of the Belmont Trail, proposed Belmont Trail, and a uh, hostel in uh, Randolph Village, so like a hut right in the village. Um, the idea basically, as you guys know, with Belmont Trail is to connect the community. So, you know, we have Belmont Trail up to the top of Randolph Gap. So we've gotten landowner permission basically from Randolph Gap heading east down toward uh, Randolph and Braintree. Um, so we're applying, the town of Randolph, I should say, is applying, um, and, you know, Ridge Line Outdoor Collective um, is simply a, a partner in that application, or not the primary applicant or administering the grant or any sort. So um, this letter is just simply to support that um, application, um, and the Braintree Select Board also submitted a letter of support um, last week, I believe, or earlier, no, last week. Um, so yeah, we're just looking for support letter from the town of Rochester and Braintree to support Randolph um, grant application for a grant application. So, so <clears throat> I'll recuse myself from the conversation just to avoid any potential conflict of interest or appearance of that since I have a bike shop and these are trails. So I'll hand it over to you two to, to talk about this. Well, I live up in the hollows. And so some of the trails that you mentioned are familiar to me. They may not be immediately in my backyard, but they're certainly close to my backyard. And I welcome with open arms, bring it on. It is so enjoyable to see the people recreating 
up in the hollows. It's a wonderful place, and I love sharing it. So you have my support. Yeah, I, I don't see any issue with it. Anything we can get to get people enjoying our communities and uh, in support of them, I think, is a good way to travel. So I'm all for it, too, Pat. I'm happy with that. Okay, so shall we uh, move to support both ventures? I, I think we move to support a letter for both in support of both ventures and, and uh, go from there. And I'll second that. All in favor? All right. All right. You're good. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate yep. it. Thank you. No problem. You want to um, sign these so he can take him home with him yep. tonight? He, run, he runs yeah. a tight ship, so yeah. let's keep it going. <laughs> You yeah, it's, of it's us, a, both of us it's a good it? thing for the community well. and the surrounding areas, <clears throat> too. Thanks for coming down to um, extrapolate. <laughs> Thank we, you, Do you need a copy of this? I was going to say, I might run in and just make a copy. Yep. The, um, the next topic well, that we, we were going to talk about is on a, a choice or approval for the location for the town meeting. We're um, in the uh, interesting opportunity of, of having two, two places where we could do that, either in the, the school auditorium or in um, Pierce Hall, where both have history of, of hosting um, this meeting. Um, you know, with the school in uh, in transition here, it may be, um, it will probably be some of the conversation, I would think, in the meeting about what, what's going to transpire with that building. So I, I kind of think it would make sense to have it in the auditorium just to, to you know, to bring that topic forward. But uh, what, what are you guys thinking? As long as they can heat it. Yeah, well... As long as we can heat it. We can heat it. We're paying yeah. for that now. Uh, I'm against it. I, I think Pierce Hall would be a good shot to start, just to see how it would go. And I think that would be good to do, but it, you know, it's up to you guys. I'm, I vote no to the school and yes to Pierce Hall. And that's where I stand. I feel just on a practical scale that um, with COVID still present in the community, and the hope and wish that we have a conversation about the future of the high school, that our normal turnout of what 135 people will probably, I'm hoping that that turnout will be much larger due to the fact that we're talking about the future of the high school building at that town meeting. So I'm, ex I'm hoping that we see a couple hundred people mm -hmm. and with the possibility of needing some social distancing, I think that I would rather see it in the auditorium. I think we still need that extra space. Think there's more room in the auditorium than in Pierce Hall? I feel there is. They can't use yeah. the balcony. Oh, you can't. I was thinking yet. of the balcony, yeah. yeah. You can't use that yet. Yeah. So I vote to stay with the auditorium. All right. Well, I guess um, we'll do it. The auditorium. Yep. That's uh, fine. No, it's, um, I I appreciate your your point, Frank, and um, that's fine. I mean, I'm okay with it. Yep. yep. So mine that's is really fine. just numbers. Yep. Hopefully. All right. Everyone, come to town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't forget we have Nancy too, doing just so you mm -hmm. Nancy Nancy, Nancy. Yep. Okay. And um, um, yeah, Nancy, you want to speak to your um, your proposal, your concerns? Sure. My concern is the um, drive that is the entrance and exit for the cemetery for Woodlawn Cemetery um, is a dangerous egress if you are leaving the cemetery and turning left onto Route 100, you really have poor, poor visibility uh, for traffic traveling northbound. And my proposal was that there be a convex mirror placed across the road, um, which would really facilitate visibility. It's just dangerous. And I'm hoping that nobody gets hurt there. 
including me. Right. Did you have a close call or something that brought this to your attention or what? No, but I've had some surprises. You know, I'm I'm very cautious when I leave there. I, I turn off my radio, I roll down the windows, I sit there and I listen and I listen. Um, and still sometimes I find myself having to really accelerate out of the lane. So if that's a close call, that's a close call. And, and you had talked with the state about this, and then they, they pushed it back yeah. into our court? Exactly. Because yeah. it is a state, um, a state highway there. Which is why I started there, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and they said they don't do that, and directed me back to the town. I spoke with John about this a while ago, and he's not too keen on the idea. He's afraid it invites vandalism and we'll be buying mirrors quite often. And a solution that he came up with is to eliminate the left-hand turn there and turn to the right, go north, turn around and head south. Drive around the park or turn around at the schoolyard or and we just alleviate the left-hand turn and put a sign, we'd have to put another sign down below the 30 mile an hour to indicate a hidden drive on the right to the northbound traffic on Route 100. Yeah, if people were uh, following the speed limit, it probably wouldn't be as much it, of an issue. Right. right, exactly. So Nancy, where does this mirror, um, I'm looking at the photo of Bill Hayes' house, where does this mirror uh, go? Where, where is it being mounted? I'm not sure exactly. Um, and I, you know, it's not really my decision. Um, well, we have jurisdiction well, over a certain amount of right of way. So if, we, if you were exactly. going to like put it on his house or one of his trees, I think that's outside of the right of way. And um, the, you're then on private property, whereas you don't need our blessing. If Bill wants to have a mirror out there and it's outside of the right of way, then I, I, I don't see where we even have a decision to make. You, can you tell me what the right of way is? I've had difficulty figuring that out. It's different for a state highway than a town. A town is 25, right? And a state, 35? Oh, it's more than that. It, it, it depends on where it is, I think. Uh, I know at, at, uh, up by my cabin, it's, it's 65 on the right side going west and uh, from the center line and it's 45 i think going to the west on the left side uh, and if you look at apple hill up there the white fence that he has where his horses mm -hmm. that's in the state right away up near his house they have different right ways in different sections of town for reasons of you know uh bank sliding and, and floods and everything else. So I don't know what the exact right of way is there. Um, but, you know, we also have a uh, water line buried there underneath the, on the, on his property on across his property, the road there too. There. So, I, but I don't know what the right of way is, Nancy. Uh, I don't. Nancy, okay. has something to say? I had not. Nancy. Yes, Nancy. Yep. Am I muted or not? Nope, you're no, you're not. Ahead. Go ahead. Um, there's a right of way through town. I think it's from bridge to bridge, the state right of way, and that's an established. Um, I w I think it's like thirty feet on each side from, from the center, center line. From the yeah. center line. But it's that's simple enough to find. Right, and this would be just before the bridge, unless you put it on the guardrail. Then I would be concerned about it being of any use at all in the winter when right. flowers are splattering it with stuff. Right. I had envisioned it as being on a pole. On what? On I a think pole. The house is. Yeah, I think the house is back kind of far from the road. And you talked with the property owner there? 
Yeah. I did, and he, he's in agreement that um, it's a dangerous situation and that would, he's in favor of putting a mirror there. And if he, if he is in favor of doing it and, and it's outside of the right of way, then they, they, they could do it themselves. Yeah, do I mean, we yeah. wouldn't have to be involved, to be and we wouldn't us. have to be responsible for the mirror. Because that was one of John's concerns was, you know, they become a target after a while. I've seen a lot of them in my travels, and they uh, certainly don't last very long in some places. And that might be one that would be an issue, depending on where it's placed. Um, excuse me, could I just ask Nancy Vadness, um, I missed somehow the property owner you spoke with and the location in a, in a, in a, in a relationship to the a driveway coming out of the of Woodlawn. Right, we did not specify, we didn't actually talk about where it would sit. Exactly. But the property about... owner you spoke with was, was across the street, next door, I, I, I didn't oh he his his the property is directly across the, the road from the driveway of the okay cemetery. thank you sorry to bother you that's okay well if he's so, willing to house it on his property and it keeps it out of the right of way that will keep it protected from being blasted by the snow plow and um, that might be the you know simplest way to just you know, pursue that with him. Okay, so what you're saying is that we would need to do it privately. Yeah. Without the town being involved. Right. Well, it's on. It's basically on private land anyway, and we would request that it be outside the the right of way. Of course. Right. So that's where it puts um, you anyway. Right. So. How exactly do I find out for certain what the right of way is there? Who do I contact? Um, we probably have maps in the town here that would give us the exact yeah, right of way there. We, we can, can we can look that up for you, Nancy. Get back to you with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All righty. That would be good. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All righty. Um, so, um, textmygov.com. It's not a .gov. It's a .com, which means it's a for-profit business. Um, who, um, you guys had looked into that? Or? Julie asked me to attend with her. Yeah. And yeah. It, it was uh, kind of interesting. They they put a pitch together for it. Um, it, it it would be pretty handy, I, but I they didn't tell us how much it was, and I haven't really looked over the proposal. I just saw it tonight. You've got it on the yeah, folder the, right in front of you. So the package price, um, basically, to go back and just say what it it's it's about reporting ish. It's like it does it reports issues, um, and each department can receive these texts whether it's the highway might have a pothole or an animal. Um, there's, you know, a, a dog that's running loose and um, somebody can text it so that the text animal control would receive the text. So it just, it, it just reports common um, issues and then agencies can be involved or, and we can set them up just uh, based on how frequent um, we may have problems with that. But the, the cost itself, um, I thought you had seen it. No, I didn't. I so seen it. the package price um, came in, and we had to attend the seminar first before they would give us the price. And uh, the package price is 2500 for um, the first year, 3500 for a $1,000 implement setup fee, which in would include setting up all the departments with key words um, so that residents could text or communicate. Um, like, like if John, if There's... if the road was slippery and somewhere on the hollows, mm -hmm. and they tried to get a hold of the John, or or they would call this service and it would automatically get a hold of John, oh. instead of 
going through Julie during the day. If, or me at night. Or yeah, night or any night, of yeah. us. Right. But it's it's a little more costly than I was hoping it would be, so I'm not sure we want to. Right. And then we'd have to, um, I guess it's assuming that everyone in town has a phone they can text with. Right. right. You know, that yeah, too. You know. Yep. But, um, well, it actually, it's not that way. They, they'd they call in and the service would automatically send it to send who? It to, okay. So there's send no, it to somebody. There's no download for the user or the municipality. Um, and then, like, they gave us an example. So I texted in select board to the number they provided, and then all of a sudden it texted me back a link for the select board um, to go to the minutes and... Mm -hmm. to orca and yeah it was it was kind of neat how it worked and it was easy but um the annual cost every year would be 2500 yeah. and that includes um 25,000 text messages a year it sounds a little pricey to it me does. it does a little and um and uh a little pricey and, and yeah. not totally redundant for what we have in place, but we, right. we do seem to get along getting the word out. Right. Yep. It seems like it would probably be very good in a larger pop population. Right. Do um, they keep record of the text that you get? Yep. So oh, yeah. you, the, the user, like how we set it up, can go in and it keeps everything. Um, you can log in, and then it keeps all of the information there for you. So you would be noted on all the texts that go to the animal control and all the yep. texts that go to the constable. Make sure everything is handled and taken care of. Okay. Uh, do we know if there's other towns that are using this service? Not around here. They're, they're mainly bigger cities, they were saying. Yeah. Or not bigger so, cities, but... but, yeah, but yeah, he said know, it's... Bigger metro they, areas. They, um, take care of populations of 500 or more. So. Right. But I think it's a little pricey myself. Yeah, I think. Um, and you have to commit the. When you commit, you have to commit for two year contract. So let's kick that. We thought it was down. great yeah, until we, you know. Until we saw the price, yeah. Right. The price <clears throat> was a little. Yeah, especially at the just beginning the budget process, I don't know if we're ready to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that I don't really think we need it, but well, that would be, be interesting guess. to research it a little more and, and mm -hmm. see who who is using it and get them. I mean, it's yep. if they're um, they're based out in Colorado. Yeah, yeah, or Utah, Utah. I guess mm -hmm. Utah, yep. Utah. Mm -hmm. Utah. All right, so we'll um, we'll um, table that one. Okay. Thanks for taking the time to do. How long was the the seminar? Well, Fifteen. 15 no, probably minutes. half hour. Yeah. I'd yeah, say at least. Not crazy. Oh. Yeah, not wasn't crazy. It was kind of neat to see how it worked and all. But all right. Um, next on the agenda, we've got a um, proposal to the ending of the lease with SimQuest and going with Miggy for our office printer and scanner, and. Um, I guess I understand that it's just pretty much same price. It may be a tad less expensive, but you're, right. you're feeling it'll be better better service. I I think the uh, customer service part of it would be really good. Um, just having spoke with uh, with their service um, for pro I guess it's been for the past two years I've been talking with them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and not realizing, but the, <laughs> but the uh, but the lease is coming up in in March, so um, they would handle all of that. They would take care of it, and and there like have they're... been some frustrations with this machine, also, correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he would set up like the the gentleman who who spoke with me said that he would set up presets, so like whether lawyers or anybody's in to do copies, it just makes it simplified. And we've just been, we, I feel like we've created some waste, you know, just from frustrations of running it. And, but, um, yeah, and it's a little less. It's a little bit a less, little less than what we're, we're using right now. And it, and it includes... The lease is coming up, I'd say, yeah. So are you uh, <laughs> doing this at the end of March or now? Well, the, the thing is, he said that um, we could put the order in now because he doesn't know how long it'll take to get the machine mm -hmm. right now with the way 
uh, manufacturing is at this time. But, um, and he would handle the return of the other machine. So there is a small cost to return it. But um, if we ordered, if we, if you had agreed and ordered now, then I feel like that would get us a machine soon. So he would have us at the, on his list. That's fine by me. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm all for it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't have an Grading issue with is that. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Painful, but good in the long run. Yeah, better than what we got. At right. this point. Cool, let's do it. Uh, that brings us to you, Joan. Are you there in the Cyberland? Yes, I am. I'm here. Hey. Uh, I don't Hi. really have anything to report this evening, though. All right. <laughs> you, you did uh, get some stuff done on the West Hill Bridge, is that correct? Uh, yes, you saw my email. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'll get back to you when I hear something from uh, the Carter family uh, to see what they're looking for in terms of compensation. I'll make them an offer, as I said in my email, and let them respond to that. Sounds good. Okay. All right. All right. Um, we don't have Tony here from the library, but did I read in the paper that they've... Um, Gone back to just um, picking up your stuff outside, not letting people in again. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're yeah. closed again. They're closed again. Yeah. All right. So that's good to know out there. Um, with the highway, there's um, everything steady as she goes, just waiting for the um, weather to turn. Uh, Terry's not here talking about uh, utilities. It, Unless he's, he's not on Zoom, is he? No. Nope. Um, um, I believe, did Jeff log in there? Yes, he did. Yeah, what have you got for us tonight, Jeff? Hi, all. Um, well, I'm, I'm working on uh, the uh, Rochester Area Climate Initiative, trying to get a uh, good turnout in the subject area groups that were prioritized by uh, Valley residents uh, at our last meeting. The next meeting coming up is uh, December 6th, I believe. And at the much of today was getting uh, kind of a catalog of all of the uh, agricultural businesses uh, in the area together. Um, let's see, I did talk with Greenmount Power today. Um, they still haven't given me a, a little summary of what uh, they received in their bids uh, for the resiliency zone. However, um, Two of the, I believe, eight bidders um, are uh, talking about utilizing space uh, slightly away from town uh, that North Hollow Farm owns. They're looking at the uh, gravel pit. Um, and GMP is pretty excited about that. They think that uh, with a 3.5 acre um, generation field, they can provide the one megawatt for the, the community. Um, the library, uh, the next steps for me uh, would be uh, our meeting uh, on uh, Friday, December 3rd at 1030 at the library with the Vermont Preservation Trust uh, mm -hmm. to take a look at uh, the exterior cladding and, and what we need to do with that. Um, Frank, you had talked about uh, recruiting some local building professionals to help look at the library and other buildings uh, with a mind to the audits uh, that we've received both from uh, the Energy Efficiency Investments in Inc. as well as uh, Black River Design way back. Um, if that hasn't, I, I'd be happy to start trying to talk to people and, and get a group together to uh, to meet on that topic if that's uh, has not already started. Yeah, that would be good. I think uh, Ray Harvey has volunteered yeah. to be on that. Mm -hmm. So that's one person that spoke to me about it. Um, yeah, Jeff, if you want to take that on, that's fine with me. Um, and um, I believe Barb Shenton has also expressed interest in being on that committee. That would be good too, yeah. if Barb, Barb would be one. The uh, one nice outcome from the uh, the meeting uh, was it last week or a couple weeks ago at 
at the uh, Pierce Hall um, in the prioritization of issues. Uh, we, we picked up seven new uh, recruits for the Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee and um, recruits that also uh, seem to want to do some things, uh, to do re some research and, and uh, some digging. So that's uh, heartening. Um, and I have to apologize. I've really blown it here. It looks like with respect to um, strategizing or looking at another way of doing mowing. Um, the, you know, the bids have come in, I guess, for the mowing. And I'm wondering if there's any way um, to negotiate with the bidders to see if, if the mowing could be done um, with battery electric equipment. It's probably a long shot um, at this point, but uh, uh, I'd be willing to, to work with any uh, select board member uh, to come up with a list of possible ways to do it. Uh, it would be would have been better if I had gotten things to folks, so it would have been in the bid package. Well, it's definitely worth having the conversation with um, whoever we go. Yeah. Yeah. If it was a if it was a one year contract, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, in terms of um, making that mandatory for the the contract, I don't know if we're ready to take that that step. It might really um, mm -hmm. limit our. Um, we only received one bid anyway. Is that yeah. correct? I haven't opened it yet. I was going to no. do that after this. Yeah. yeah. But we only received that one bid, is that correct? Yeah. Um, excuse me, um, Jeff, um, did you say, you wondered if there was a way to do the mowing with, what, did you say battery operated? I was writing as fast as electric, I could. Electric, yeah. With, with battery electric, electric, with an electric mower. With an electric mower, okay. A commercial electric mower. Commercial um, electric mower. Yeah, we had we had the Mo Electric event early uh, this year, and uh, we had uh, three different brands of commercial mowers there, and local area contractors uh, took them and mowed some of the ball fields with them. And uh, I think the technology has arrived. It's expensive. It's an upfront cost, uh, but after the upfront cost, there's hardly anything for maintenance with these things, and. Uh, that's quite different than the uh, care and feeding of gas equipment. Mm -hmm. um, if there's only one bid, that might make it a little easier to have a discussion with the, the bidder and see, see how that might work out. Uh, Has there been any, any um, talk of electric snow removal tools? Seems like that would be uh, a good idea. That's a bigger ask because uh, yeah. there is no waste heat um, mm -hmm. in a uh, bucket loader, an electric bucket loader. I mean, we uh, gasoline or diesel vehicles have lots of waste heat. And so we just tap into that for climate control in our, in our cabs. Um, uh, so it, you know, I don't think that the technology is uh, really there yet on the snow removal side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, so when do you have to make the the uh, excuse me? When do you have to make a decision about the bid that for the um, mowing? Or we, are you waiting for more? We, um, we overlooked putting the, that on the agenda for tonight, so I can okay. open the bid, but we would not make the decision. I think we're going to add that to our warning to the um, budget and finance committee meeting that we can do a, a quick. Um, approval of the bid at the beginning of that meeting, so it's properly warned. Okay, is that something that would be mentioned at the, the upcoming select board meeting, the next select board meeting, um, or not? It, it could we be. could announce the results of the previous meeting. We'll be reading yeah. the minutes from those meetings. Yeah, we'll so. be <laughs> reading the minutes from the meeting. So yeah, it would, I mean. And I just wondered because I don't go to your budget and finance meetings, and I no. thought if people wanted to know about it, then I could report it if it was in the next. Okay, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. I will mute yeah. myself yeah, again. No, no, no worries, Martha. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in that it's a three-year contract, that that makes me. Um, hope that uh, there could be some negotiation and possibly uh, move to that kind of equipment. Um, yep, well, um, 
I guess, yeah, we'd have that conversation with him um, when we get on to that, you know. Okay. I'll, I'll flesh out some possible approaches for you guys to poke holes in and uh, straighten me out with, and uh, we'll see what we can, if there's anything that I can do that'll help make this fly. Okay. Okay. And we have a commitment to the town. I'll do the homework I didn't do, but. We have, we have a commitment to the town to um, investigate climate change with every decision we make. So um, I, I keep bringing that up over and over again because I remember that the town asked us to do that. So we will continue through even in, in a three year contract to emphasize that it would be the town's wishes, the voters of the town to, to consider climate change. And if this is the consideration that works the best, we could suggest it. So it's, you know, we, we can continue to chip away at it, Jeff. Okay. okay. Sounds good. And again, my apologies for bringing this in late. Um, well, we're, uh, yeah. It would have been smoother if we'd had the conversation. Well, I'd done it uh, before you put it out to bed. That's for sure. I was, yeah, I, yeah. and it wasn't, uh, I, w I was informed, but I still let, let it fall behind. It's all good. Yeah. So. Thanks for your, your energy. We appreciate your, your um, attention to all this. All right. So um, is that, is that it for you, Jeff? Yep. He's muted. He's muted. All right. He's gone away. Um, yep. So that's that, it. That, so that's Unless you have uh, questions. Um, we do. We did receive one bid for the mowing, trimming, and snow removal um, for the town properties, which was from Four Season Property Management and Excavation from Stockbridge, Vermont. And he's um, had got a bid of ten thousand two hundred dollars per year to be paid monthly from May to October for the three-year contract. And he is also bid. Um, eighteen thousand dollars per year to be paid monthly for the snow removal November to April for the three-year contract so like I said since we did not warn this we can't make a decision either way on this tonight but we'll revisit this um, at the beginning of the budget and finance committee meeting which is appropriate because we're talking about money at that meeting anyway. <laughs> yeah. okay and that was um, John Gorton is uh, Four Seasons property management yeah. To be continued. To be continued. Um, gee, is anything Ooh. else? When it, oh, oh, you got a hand up over there? Yep. Go ahead, Jeff. Yep. When is the budget and planning meeting? Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday at, at three. three. This week, Wednesday. This at three. week, Wednesday okay. at three. Just before Turkey comes out. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We don't. Um, <laughs> we don't boy, if um, we no one to. else has anything to talk about tonight, I'd move to go into executive session yeah. to, um, to have a little talk about um, employee vacation time. And thank you all for coming.